Over here I have a, a classical bow, nothing uh, special, just a piece of wood with a, with a string attached to it, but it's a, a dangerous weapon, uh, you know, nonetheless that it's uh, so old, uh, it, it's proven very effective throughout the centuries. Um, let's look at it um, from the point of view of doing work and converting one type of energy into another type of energy. So remember, work is defined um, in science as as work time as a force times distance. So as I am pulling the the string, as I'm drawing the bow, that's the term, drawing the bow, I am pulling against the force over a certain distance. Uh, it's not as easy to calculate in here how much work I am doing because uh, as I am extending the as I'm drawing the bow, the force gets larger and larger and larger. So it's not a constant. I'm not doing work against a constant force. Uh, we would have to use calculus and, and uh, find some function how the force is changing. And then we could do a little integra integration and find out the, the total amount of work I'm doing. But um, whatever amount of work I will do in joules, we could say that then this energy, this energy is stored in form of um, elastic potential energy in the bow. So, a transfer of energy from myself into the into the bow through work. Uh, the energy was uh, in terms of um, chemical potential energy stored in the chemical bonds, in the sugars, in the carbohydrates in my body. And as I'm doing the work, I'm basically taking the energy from my body and I give, I'm giving it to the to the bow. And then when I release the arrow, when the arrow flies out, uh, the energy goes into the arrow. Not all of it. Some of it, you know, warms up the the bow, warms up the string, but most of the energy then is transferred into the arrow, into its energy of motion, into its kinetic energy. And then when the when the arrow hits the target, you could, you know, some people might think that the energy is gone, it's lost because nothing is moving anymore, uh, and there is no elastic potential energy. But um, energy cannot get destroyed, so. Um, if you actually measure it very carefully, um, then the target, the arrow itself, the place where it hit, the air around, all of that warmed up a little bit. And some work will be have to be done also, you know, as 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 the arrow is stopped by the target uh, or whatever it hits. You know, as it goes inside, friction forces will will transfer basically the energy into into thermal energy, into heat. And so at the end, uh, even the sound, some sound is created. And that energy spreads through the through the air in, in form of you know kinetic energy of the tiny air molecules as a pressure wave, and then eventually the pressure wave you know let's say comes to someone someone's ear I can actually hear when I hit the target. Uh, if the target is not too far away I can hear it. Um, so the fact that I can hear it means that that my ears my my eardrums were vibrated a little bit by that energy. And eventually that energy goes through my middle ear and it's changed in, inside of my head. It's changed into electrical impulse that goes in my brain and it warms up my head a little bit. Um, so at the end, basically all of that energy is transferred into uh, thermal energy. Um, I have an assignment for you. <clears throat> Here's what I would like you to find out, calculate. When I, when I release the arrow, all of the energy, the potential energy, goes into the kinetic energy of the arrow. As we know, kinetic energy can be found as one half mv squared. You need the mass of the arrow and, and then the, you know, how fast it's going. You square that, multiply by one half, and you get the kinetic energy. Here is my question. Um, if instead of shooting one arrow, what if I shot two arrows? You know, sometimes you see that in in, uh, in movies. Robin Hood does that, or uh, these fancy uh, bow shooters do that. that they, they take not one arrow but they take two arrows, and of course they never miss. Um, I've tried to do that shot, and actually tried it with three arrows as well. So, you know, if I draw, if I draw the bow with two arrows, and um, I can actually feel it and see that the arrow is, is flying slower uh, as, you know, when I'm shooting just one arrow. And it should make sense from the point of view of energy. Basically, each of the arrows gets half of the, the energy that, uh, that only one arrow would get. So it's the still, still, I still do the same amount of work. 
uh, or at least it's very close to the same amount of work. You know? um, and I want you to uh, calculate, assuming that um, when we have two arrows, uh, I do the same amount of work. So the bow stores the same amount of potential energy. How much slower would each of the arrows be if I fire two arrows uh, compared to when I fire just one? <coughs> so each of the arrows gets half the amount of, of energy as in the case if I was shooting just one. But how is that reflected in the velocity of each of those two arrows? Is each of those two arrows, you know, half as fast as before? Or um, is it four times? You know, or, or is it eight times, nine times? Or is it going to be flying with the same speed? So please find out. Um, I would be, I will be looking for your for your work. So please show me all of your calculations, and um, I hope um, that this is a fine assignment for you to figure out.